morning, everybody. We're going to call this 76th regular session to order. Uh, if you don't mind, please stand uh, if, as you are able for the invocation followed by the pledge to the flag. We live at a time like many times where many troubling things are happening. The financial world is crumbling. War arises everywhere. Crises, political disagreements, they're with us always. But let us remember the many blessings, how lucky we are to be living here in this world, how lucky we are to be living in the country we do with the freedoms we have, how fortunate we are to live in this beautiful community with our beautiful surroundings and many friends and family. So let us appreciate our blessings as we strive to confront the problems that face us every day at the local level as well. Give us judgment, give us guidance, give us the knowledge to deal with the issues in front of us. Let us make good decisions. They will not please everyone, but let us make good decisions. Thank you again for your presence. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you all. Just a few announcements. We are operating under the rules of procedure adopted September 23rd, 2013. The use of cell phones during meetings is restricted. All correspondence for distribution to elected officials should include a copy for the clerk and uh, for the inclusion in the official record. Our meeting schedule, uh, Tuesday, September 1st. Next Tuesday, we have a special session at 4 p.m followed by a work session at 4.15. Uh, Tuesday the 8th, we will have no meeting. Tuesday the 15th, we'll have a special session at 3 and a work session at 4. Tuesday, September 22nd, we'll have a work session beginning at 3. And Tuesday the 29th, a regular session at 7 p.m. So that's our September schedule. I do intend to reappoint this evening uh, Carolyn Brooks to the Hagerstown Housing Authority. Her term will expire August 30th, 2020. Uh, that is the one of the, the only board that I have sole appointment authority for, so I do not need a vote from the council. But uh, to reappoint Mr. Mark David to the City Ethics Commission, I will entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second the term to expire on September 1, 2020. Second, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? This is specifically for the second one, correct? For Just for the Ethics Commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and Mr. David is reappointed to the Ethics Commission. We do have several guests here tonight and we're going to first uh, have staff uh, share with us the winners of the Hagerstown, uh, Highlight Hagerstown Awards. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I know there's a lot of folks here tonight. Who is here for Highlight Hagerstown? Okay, terrific, thank you. I'm pleased to announce the 2015 Highlight Hagerstown Awards. These are properties that, uh, through their landscaping and facade improvements, boost the curbside appeal of the city of Hagerstown. And tonight we have, or this year, we have two categories. There is a residential and a non-residential category. And as your properties announced, if you would like to come forward and the mayor will hand you a certificate. Thank you. Our first property tonight is 433 North Potomac Street, Edward Williams. Our second residential property tonight is 614 Piccadilly Drive, Linda Kaiser. Our 
Our third residential winner is 1411 Oak Hill Avenue, John Carbone. Don't know if he's here this evening. And our non-residential winner is the Washington County Museum of Fine Arts for their improvements to their entrance at 401 Museum Drive. <laughs> and uh, this year we received over 20 nominations through the city's website and uh, the HBAC, the Hagerstown Beautification Advisory Committee met earlier this month and went through and, looked and decided these four properties that all, while all the properties that were nominated highlight Hagerstown, these were the ones that stuck out. So thank you very much. Now I'm going to ask the West End Little League to please come forward. West End Little League All-Stars. <laughs> come on up here, guys. Face the audience. So tell me, you guys won something, didn't you? Tell everybody. Um, we won the district championship. All right. All right. So what does that mean? How many teams did you have to play against? I think that's five. All right. Give it up for the West End Little League. Well, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, coaches, thanks for being here. The U.S. Conference of Mayors has designated August of 2015 as Play Ball Month. And here in Hagerstown, we are also celebrating that. Uh, the idea is to reinvigorate the national pastime and to keep baseball uh, alive and well for many, many more years to come. Uh, so I have a proclamation here I'm going to give to each of your coaches, and uh, it's for all of you. This is for the West End Little League District Champions and Play Ball Month, August of 2015, whereas the sport of baseball is America's national pastime, and whereas the United States Conference of Mayors and Major League Baseball have come together to recognize August as Play Ball Month, and whereas Play Ball Month encourages families and communities to participate in the game of baseball, thus creating a sustainable enthusiasm for the game. And whereas cities across the country will be coming together during the month of August to support the growth of baseball. And whereas the sport of baseball has produced countless family and community bonding experiences, teaching our youth valuable life lessons of teamwork, perseverance, leadership, and sportsmanship. And whereas baseball has formed a diverse culture showcasing a snapshot of where America stands today. It provides a, sound, uh, provides a proud sense of belonging to something bigger than oneself. Now, therefore, be it resolved, with the support of the City Council, I, David Geisberts, the mayor of the city of Hagerstown, Maryland, do hereby recognize and the importance and influence of the sport of baseball in Hagerstown. And we congratulate the West End Little League on winning the 2015 District Championship and proclaim 20, August 2015 as Play Ball Month throughout the city of Hagerstown. So once again, give these guys a round of applause.
Thank you. Congratulations. We won't be offended, fellas, if you leave before the rest of the meeting is over. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can always catch us on YouTube. We're channel 25. Yeah, we definitely do. They were very, very nice. They were very nice. Right. That would have been cruel and unusual punishment for right. violation. <laughs> Give them a student service learning hour for staying for the rest of the meeting. Thanks, parents. Thanks, coaches. We do have several folks signed up for citizen comments, which is the next item on our agenda. So I am going to turn to Mr. Kevin Spielman. And let me just remind folks, as Mr. Spielman comes up, that citizen comments are limited to five minutes per individual. Meetings are televised and recorded. Your comments will be air on air and on tape and on YouTube. So if you don't mind saying your name and your address for the record, please. My name's Kevin Spielman. I live in Potomac Towers. Well, I believe you all know where that is. My question is, you all are doing the making such progress on West Antietam Street. Bowman's got the one building completely tore down. They've started the, on the next building. They've got the trees sawed down. So I believe that's coming down. They've told me uh, there's another building next to the Owls Club, directly across from District Court. Bowman must own that. They're gonna tear that down. My question is, another property in the city, the southeast section, when are they going to tear down the MELP site, municipal electric light plant? Yes, we're very familiar with that. Uh, right now we have an agreement that it should be down by the end of September. So the current agreement calls for it to be completely demolished by then. Uh, if not, then we will have uh, several legal remedies that we could go through to make that happen. But we anticipate that sooner rather than later, it will be completely demolished. Certainly not as fast as all of us would like, but it is coming down. Mr. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. Mr. Mayor, can I make a comment? Please. please? Uh, thank you for asking that question. That's a very important question. Uh, quite frankly, it's been the determination of this mayor and council uh, after about 30 or 40 years of discussion to get that thing down. It's a complete and total eyesore and uh, it needs to come down for the well-being of Hagerstown, well-being of Hagerstown citizens. So we are doing our very best and hopefully by the end of September, as the mayor said, it will be on the ground and the ground will be cleaned up. And hopefully they can clean up West Antietam Street a little bit better. A lot of them buildings need to come down, except I do think the old Antietam Street uh, mail building, I think it's got potential. It's up for sale. A lot of them buildings need to come down. It's a nice door, too. Yep. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is Mr. Patrick Prudhomme. Mr. Prudhomme. Hello. Uh, I was here last month and we were talking about the, the weeds in the sidewalk. I want to let you know that um, Paul Falk, Falk uh, uh, was working on it uh, and I spoke with him on Friday and in my little neighborhood, the Elizabethtown area, there were 361 violations. I think that's pretty wonderful. Uh, 
think it's ridiculous that it got to the point where in one shot you have to, you know, that that many people aren't following the rules. Uh, I know it was a tremendous effort for code enforcement to go out and do that. Uh, I feel also a, um, a burden on the city from the lazy and the slum lords that they think that the employees that I'm helping to pay for, which have better things to do, are supposed to be human calendars for their maintenance. Um, I'm proposing tonight that instead of just your violation, which I think is wonderful, $200, five days for the first violation to get it in order, three days, second time, 24 hours, the third time. I think that's really good. Uh, but if we're going to ask the men and women in code enforcement to go out and babysit lazy people and slumlords, $15 a ticket. You get a ticket. When I park my car in the wrong place, no, no parking meter comes along, no, no meter maid comes along and tells me, you have five days to get your car out of here. I'm ticketed right away. If these people are so lazy that they need us to be human reminders, calendars for them, then I think $15 is worth our time to go out. Then we start with the violation after that. Uh, it is, um, it's ludicrous to think that at starting at approximately $33,000 a year for a code enforcement person, that they have any real interest in spending a month putting together 361 violations just in my little neighborhood. I want them jonesing to go out there. That ticket money should be theirs. If they go out and do it, they get the $15. I want it to be a race to those, to those tickets for them. Um, we've got 40 to 45,000 cars a day coming in through dual highway, right past this building and back out the other side. And we can't seem to get it together. This is, not, this is not because we don't have the fiber to do it with. We've got the traffic, we've got beautiful buildings. We have got a serious maintenance issue. And it's here, in this room, that it's emanating from. You're not getting your job done for us. We live like slovenly pigs in this town. And you've got to do something for us, and you've got to do it fast. And if you're going to ask the men and women in code enforcement to stand up and go out and make this monumental effort, then stand behind them and make sure that they get paid for it. $15 tickets, then the violations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, we will take that under advisement, and I think you had it right when you said that the slum lords are the major problem that we have here. What do you mean by take it under advisement? We'll take your, your proposal under consideration. Okay, and what time frame is that? Because we've got these, the, these people out there right now are doing the job, and they should be making the money. No, and I, I think you're capable of moving fast when you want to. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a timeline for you, but what What's I'm saying is- What's the normal timeline when you say take something under advisement? Well, a couple of weeks. So okay, I can fantastic. consult with staff, and then we'd have to come back to a work session, uh -huh. so, yeah. Fantastic, then we should have an answer by the next council meeting. Uh, we, we might be told that it's not possible to give the $15 directly well, yeah. to that, that's the code enforcement. That's I don't think that's, that's not going to happen. I mean, uh, you, but we have. Why do you think that's not going to happen, sir? Because you don't want to do it? No, because we have People to follow be about the tickets law. All the, the same time. reason that our police officers aren't getting paid to write tickets, because that's not their job. It's not, a, it's not a police job, it's code enforcement. If they can hand out a violation, the city can hand out a ticket. I grew, up in, I grew up in a neighborhood, not, sir, where sir, we handed out tickets all the time. The question is not a ticket. The question is the code enforcement people getting the money for the ticket. That's and why the, is that a problem? You want them to do the job? You not want to pay them? Not that way. Uh, because? Sir, if you can't understand that, I can't explain it to you. I, I'm, I understand English perfectly fine. If you want to explain to me, I'm willing to hear it. Well, I think maybe we can do it not in this formal setting. Uh, because well, I just got told by one of your council members that he's not even going to consider it. That's I think that's I'd pretty lame. Are you I'm, living in my neighborhood, sir? I'd be ta happy to talk to you after the meeting about why it can't be done. Okay. Uh, wow. And we wonder why we're in the position we're in? You shouldn't be up there if you don't think you can get the job done. I think this, the city motto should be, from what I hear, we have an excuse for everything we don't get done. And you're a perfect example of that. Well, I would, I would encourage you to consider running next year in the city council race, uh, or for mayor. The, the ballot is open. I'm not interested in running. I'm interested in putting together a group and suing the city for not well, following through on codes. Fine. Thank you so Within much. Within your rights. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's see. Next, Mr. Gattas. Or Mrs. Gattas. <laughs> Hi, I'm Treva Gattas. Treva. Um, 
I'm uh, one of the managing principals at Office Suppliers, which is now um, Hyperspace, um, located here in Hagerstown. And I'm here because I understand that there's a recommendation to the council to approve um, office furniture for the new downtown business center that is $7,300 higher than the proposal that, um, my, that my company submitted. Um, just to give you a little background, um, we started um, working on this project back in May of this year. We provided a total of three proposals, two of which included free design services. Um, and when reading the recommendation for the award online, um, it indicated that although we were low bid, that our product didn't meet the specifications. So um, I wanted to um, make the council aware that the latest bid specs that came out were written around product that had been discontinued. So we called the city and asked if they would accept product substitutions and they agreed that yes, they would, obviously, because they don't want to buy discontinued product. Um, and so we selected Steelcase product. Steelcase is the largest manufacturer of office furniture in the world. And um, the product, the specific product that my team and I selected was based on other um, incubators and um, co-working spaces that we've done throughout the state of Maryland. We also used a nationally pre-bid contract called NJPA to come up with the pricing and the savings to the city for this project. Um, again, 28% uh, savings over the submittal of our competitor. Um, some of those projects in the state of Maryland include the Johns Hopkins University Fast Forward Program, Betamore and Baltimore's Downtown Partnership, Local companies, public companies that use um, our services and products include Meredith, Washington County uh, Board of Education, and some of the other administrative offices. Um, and they also use these nationally bid contracts. Um, so I'm just here um, wondering how a recommendation for furniture for a new state-of-the-art business center in downtown Hagerstown um, that is uh, supposed to attract new business um, it can uh, be decided based on a company's recommendation who recommended discontinued product at a premium price. Thank you. Thank you. I think we may have some staff here who could be able to respond to your concerns for everybody's benefit. Okay, sure. Sure. Uh, Hi, Andrew. So to be clear about this process, we did end up recommending uh, the higher bid in this case because while the products that we had originally spec'd were discontinued, we were looking for like products. Uh, we were looking for a style and a feel. Uh, for the most part, the bid that was presented by uh, Hyperspace uh, was along those lines. They, they nailed it for a lot of it, but there were a couple products in there, some, some of the specialized ones like the conference table, uh, specifically I'm getting in the weeds here of the conference table and some of the, some of the other uh, specialized like um, uh, couches and specialized chairs that where people would work at uh, were not we the, we didn't think that they were quite up to the design specs that we were looking for uh, so and we engaged uh, a designer to help us come up with this uh, uh, the bid specs in the first place uh, and he agrees also that you know all things considered all the whole entire bid is one big pack package considered that the higher bid was the more appropriate one in this case so that's why staff came forward with the recommendation that we did Thank you. Do council members have any questions? I don't. Okay. Thank you for coming. The next citizen to sign up to speak is Ms. Nancy Allen. Nancy. Good evening. Uh, I'm here tonight in two capacities. First, I'd like to speak as a citizen of the uh, city of Hagerstown. I live on 924 Oak Hill Avenue, and I have two questions for the mayor and council. Uh, it, it is specifically directed towards public safety. And in our immediate neighborhood, we are very concerned with the safety of our residents. Um, we have seen an increase of crime in our neighborhood over the past several years. And I would beg to differ with the gentleman who spoke earlier about a need for increased uh, code enforcement. What I believe we need are an increase in police officers on the streets. I think that would be a wonderful deterrent to the criminal activity in our neighborhood. And anything the mayor and council can do to make that happen, I think I would very much support. In addition to that, I know that we've had some recent um, 
criminal activity in our neighborhood, including an armed uh, robbery at Rita's. And I understand that this happened uh, just this past week, and I was wondering what is the procedure for notifying residents of such activity when there are armed burglars out in the neighborhood? Is there some way to notify us? Do we look on you know, uh, the, the television, or is there some way to alert us immediately? specifically because we have a high school right across the street there, we have Fountaindale Elementary, and we have um, uh, Northern Middle School as well. So I'm concerned about that. And I'm also concerned with the, the just the, the feeling amongst the residents. Uh, when I, every time I leave my house, I shut my windows, I lock my doors, I lock my windows. Whenever I go upstairs, I lock my doors. I never leave my door unlocked at all because we've had people walk into the houses and just help themselves. And I'm concerned about this and I'd like to know if there is a plan in place. My second question, and I know that was a long question, but my second question is this. In light of recent activities in major cities such as uh, Ferguson and Baltimore, does the city of Hagerstown have a plan in effect if there would be such a type of incidents that would break out here, do we have training for our police officers uh, so that they, you know, go into some type of a of a mode to secure our city here? And um, because I'm concerned about this, I live just a couple blocks up the street, and I could see something like that happening here. I think that the city of Hagerstown is at a tipping point um, in in our community, and we are concerned. And I bring. I bring these concerns not only from myself, from, but from my neighbors as well. Well, let me address your first concern, I think, had to do with more police needed. Yes. I just want to make sure everybody knows there are more police on the streets now than in the last 20 years. Are they walking in our neighborhoods? I don't know if they're walking in the neighborhoods, but they're certainly patrolling the neighborhoods. Well, we have seen from um, recent uh, statistics and Chief Holtzman was one to provide us with this that a police presence in the neighborhood is a is a deterrent to criminal activity and we'd like to see more of that and we another thing I'll mention about police uh, Chief Holtzman we were very sad to hear that he was leaving and the question also wh when the mayor and council was made aware of his decision to go do we offer an incentive to try to keep him here no I can tell you with certainty he has made that decision. I talked with him about that. Uh, I think there are several considerations when you when you have a situation like that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, for him, it's a family decision. It's not just for him. He has to consider his his loved ones. Right. But the other thing is when you consider the organization as a whole, uh, and you say, well, we'll give you more money if you stay. Uh, but then he'll be completely, uh, you know, off off scale with his peers and other departments. And so I think that's a, a major consideration. But the bottom line is. There's no amount of money. Yeah, uh, money wasn't an issue. That, that could have okay. kept him here. That's not the issue. Fair enough. I, I just, we hated to see him go. We felt uh, he was agree. a valuable resource. He and, is a valuable resource. And we were, you know, making great headway. Yeah. To, to go to another point that you made um, about the increase in crime, we actually received some information from Chief Holtzman today uh, with some crime statistics that show a significant decrease in robbery. So notwithstanding the recent event with the armed robbery at Rita's, uh, and those certainly make a lot of headlines and cause us all to take pause and consider our, our safety. We are seeing the effects of more police on the street with some pretty significant reductions uh, from last year over, uh, I know robbery was one of the categories, I think motor vehicle thefts, it's four or five, six different categories we've seen significant decreases in crime. Uh, Have we seen a decrease in the uh, amount of drug related I don't activity. think that was included in our report today. Mm -hmm. I would or have to get that information crime. from him. I think it was mainly violent, violent crime. Yeah, this was violent crime other than murder and rape. So armed mm -hmm. robbery, uh, those kinds of things uh, have been decreasing. Um, your, your second question? I'm sorry. About My second out. question was about our readiness to... Oh, right. right. Yes. The, the answer is yes, we okay. have a plan. That's we good. actually sent a number of officers to Baltimore to assist them. Yes. Because um, they have special training. That's right. I understand that. And I'm glad that we were able to assist. Right. And I would hope that this mayor and council would have a different course of action should such activity arise in this we area. Would. And let me address we, we that. Would. Let me address that point because I think one of the things, one of the reasons why we haven't seen any of that kind of uh, 
uh, unrest, if you will, here in Hagerstown is because our police department over the last couple of decades uh, continues to maintain a strong relationship with the neighborhoods, with every neighborhood. Uh, and I think, uh, especially in the Jonathan Street neighborhood, making sure the police obviously are present there, uh, but making connections in the community. Folks who are committing crime in that neighborhood who don't belong there, the folks who live in that neighborhood don't want them there any more than any Absolutely. of us do. Absolutely, and what I'm concerned with is that people may be coming in to create the oh, unrest. Well, we know they are. Oh, well, we yeah. know they are. So if there would be a, such a situation, I hope and they Well, would. not that they're trying to create unrest, but that they're trying to come in and engage in criminal activity. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, looting and destruction of, of property. And so uh, the police are well aware of that. They work with the community. And I okay. think that's why, uh, again, you see, uh, I, I actually disagree that we're at a tipping point. I think we're actually in a really good place in terms of our relationship with the community and trying to address really the core issues, which are much deeper than police interaction, which are housing, education, and poverty. Those are the, the real underlying uh, I, I would beg to differ. Iceberg. I believe the real underlying issue here is jobs, which leads me to my next point here. And now I'm speaking on a different capacity. Uh, Nancy, and before you before you go on, I want to okay. Uh, the precise question that you asked in your comments just a couple of minutes ago about the Baltimore issue mm -hmm. was an, was exactly what I asked the chief shortly after uh, that happened in Baltimore. And uh, I can assure you that plans are in place, that we uh, um, are aware of the possibility and that, that adequate training has taken place. And uh, the, the, the police understand that uh, people can travel from one place to another very quickly, mm -hmm. and they're prepared for that. That's good to know. Thank you. It is. It is good to know. That, that's. I mean, I, reassuring to hear because you know you don't know, and of course fear has a way to multiply, and you want to pr protect your home. And here in Maryland, we don't have the castle law like they do in other states, and you know we're concerned about that as citizens. We don't want people coming into our homes, and and trying to do harm or whatnot. That and certainly from other areas that don't even belong here, they're just, you know adding to the, the mix. Well, and your, and your outreach to the community through your website is very helpful to many, many, many of us. I can remember re recently reading about the lady in the long flowing dress. You know who I'm talking right. about? Yes, that's right. I think you were referring to her a moment ago. Yes. Yes, uh, people need to be aware of those things. I actually uh, understand from your website that she broke in, walked into a man's house mm -hmm. and someplace in North End, I guess it was Oak Hill Avenue, and uh, raided his kitchen, and mm -hmm. she tried to get into numerous other houses as well. Um, right. That, that is a problem, though, that I'm trying to address before this meeting with the mayor to talk to the police. Unfortunately, we have no mental health facilities in the state to speak of, and while the criminal justice system doesn't have the answer for it, the answer to people like that, that the police are giving no trespassing letters to instead of arresting is very troubling to me. And that is an individual who is creating havoc in that end of town who, to my understanding, the answer of the police are, well, she's a nuisance and there's nothing we can do about it. And I don't find that acceptable even remotely. No. I've had some conversations with some folks today that have had some run-ins with that, that have found that that's been the police answer is a no trespassing letter, and I find that completely unacceptable. We didn't get you an answer on your one question, Nancy, because I don't think we have it, and you raise a very interesting question that I would like to engage with our police department, and that's a methodology for citizens to know when crimes have occurred in their neighborhood. Uh, I didn't I, want to address that. And, we and do have the 311. Well, first of all, we put out a press release as soon as those things happen. I understand but, you but you're talking that. about immediacy, and, yes. and I understand what you're talking about, sort yes. of a reverse 911 call. Right. That is not in place, and it's something that should absolutely be discussed. And, and I, I do know from code enforcement that when you have a rental property, you have to write down your name, your address, right. your emergency contact. Right. That would be a wonderful way to contact 
those out of out of area landlords to let them know this is what's occurring so and that's, that's what happens something in other we do areas. not have in place and right. that's something to seriously be discussed yes and if there is and a problem I appreciate about your it, input in that. i have yes. been speaking with aaron wolf our communications manager about that kind of notification system and i believe that uh, when we have a new website rollout, we may be able to have more of those kinds of capabilities. So, but there needs be, to be something that is alert you. immediate. Sure, right. yes. Versus That's, you have you to get a text on no, your I, phone. I know what bing, you're bing, bing. About. This is going on, and you know, for the the incident that recently Any happened. Alert. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, we try to do that in our little uh, neighborhood there. We try to put it out as soon as we we know to make people aware to be you know on the lookout if you see something because police ho uh, chief always told us you know don't be afraid to call those things in let us know if you see something out of the ordinary if you see someone that doesn't belong a car that doesn't belong and you know I've been known to follow cars and just kind of you know do my own little surveillance and my husband says you better stop that you're gonna end up with a bullet or something but you know what I feel like they will not be doing this in my neighborhood absolutely not you will not be you know dropping drugs off in a backpack behind my house in the alley if I'm aware of this because yeah I will follow you and because I just feel like if you don't take some proactive um, action here this is just going to roll right over us and we can't have that we have too many nice families and we enjoy our neighborhood and you know this is what we have to maintain safety this is an of attitude life. Absolutely. And you had one more point. I know we've probably yes. gone over five minutes, but this well, has been more Well, now I'm going to change hats, so mm -hmm. hopefully, I, uh, and I won't digress, pro I promise. Now I'm here to talk on behalf of Penmar Association of Realtors, and I have a quick question for you. We um, went through the process of trying to obtain uh, water, public water, out on our lot on Breeze Hill Drive. We um, thought we went through the process that was explained to us by former city administrator Bruce Zimmerman. We wrote letters. We are asking for the support of mayor and council and also county commissioners on that, director of um, utilities and economic development for both city and county. And I'd like to know now what is our next step? What else do we need to do to try to get that exemption to obtain water? Because of the very fact that we believe very strongly that if we would begin to build a building out there in the Washington County Airport Business Park, of which there exists the two water lines, one on Breeze Hill, one on Pennsylvania Avenue, that that would be the catalyst to spur the economic development out there that would bring the high to paying jobs, that would bring in the families with disposable income, that would help to change around the economics of our, of our city. So we'd like to know what do we need to do next? What is our next step? We're, we're eager to hear that. I don't have an answer for you tonight, but I will get back to you on that. And what would be the time frame? I'd say by the end of the week. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And th thank you very much for listening to our concerns, especially about the public safety. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will have city administrator comments. Nothing additional this evening. Thank you. Mayor and council comments. I'll start on my left with Ms. Nye. No, I'm fine. Mr. Munson. No comment. Mr. Munson. Uh, pass, Mayor. Mr. Brubaker. No comments this evening. Mr. Alshire. <laughs> You're <all> right. Um, <laughs> just one comment, and I think it speaks to Nancy's issue about uh, individuals that, that acclimate into the community. Uh, I know folks uh, uh, probably read about the uh, stabbing that occurred uh, outside of the university. Uh, I think it was last week, and uh, you know I, I saw our, our release, and, and I, I emailed and said, "Hey, you know." Uh, what's the address of this individual? It says it's in Hagers. You know, this person, you know, is, is a Hagerstown resident. And uh, one thing led to another, and I looked it up, and, and I think I got the information that it was 44 West Franklin. And, and I think I looked that up, and that was the post office. Uh, surely nobody lives at the post office. So uh, I did get a physical address. I think it was 124 East Baltimore Street. Uh, and I looked that up, and that happens to be the Wells House, uh, the very same place that I think. Uh, uh, just a few months ago, um, we had some discussion about about 67% of the folks that, that uh, are placed uh, in that rehabilitation facility uh, are not from Hagerstown. Uh, I continue to contest this notion that uh, is put forth that we somehow home grow uh, 210 uh, registered sex offenders and 7,000 uh, individuals addicted to, to, to a narcotics. Um, and, and, and the number of, of, of uh, uh, 
uh, other individuals that, that, that court systems uh, across the land seem, seem to, to find uh, the desire to place here. Uh, that individual isn't uh, a, neighbor to this, a native of this community. Um, and and uh, I think uh, the process was got back out and, and did something uh, the next day, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. And, and that could be uh, incorrect, but uh, I will say again, until we have this discussion with those entities that uh, feel a desire to grow uh, such businesses, and, and that's what they are, they're, they're, they're businesses for, for, for those types of rehabilitation services. They're, they're not uh, nonprofits as, as I would uh, define them in my head, uh, but they're businesses that grow the, the, the services uh, in our community. Uh, until we have that conversation, uh, all of these other discussions about the good things we'd like to see uh, have uh, and grow, uh, take a back seat, and, and, and we need to have that conversation. Any other comments? I just want to say congratulations to the FA Delight that we had a ribbon cutting for earlier tonight. Uh, it was very tasty food, and it's good to see another business opening up there. and. Um, with that, we will continue on with our agenda. So the first item is our consent agenda. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the entire consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. <clears throat> motion made by Mr. Munson, second by Mr. Mensner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. <clears throat> Unfinished business, item A, the approval of an ordinance transfer of land at Park Circle. Mayor, I hereby move for the approval of an ordinance authorizing the transfer of 0 0.04 acres of land from the city of Hagerstown to Buyers Commercial Properties, LLC. Land is no longer needed for a public purpose, and the Park Circle Animal Hospital will use the property to expand their parking. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, second by Mr. Mensner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Item B, an unfinished business, the approval of an ordinance to repeal chapter 183, nuisance unattended donation containers. Mr. Mayor, here I move that the Mayor and City Council adopt an ordinance to repeal chapter 183, nuisance unattended donation containers of the code of the city of Hagerstown. This chapter will be replaced with chapter 89, donation bins, which will regulate the location of bins in the city rather than ban the bins as recommended by the city attorney. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, second by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the ordinance is approved. Next item C is the approval of an ordinance to add chapter 89, donation bins. Mr. Mayor, hereby move the Mayor and City Council adopt an ordinance to add Chapter 89 donation bins to the Code of the City of Hagerstown. As recommended by the City Attorney, this chapter will replace Chapter 183, Nuisance Unattended Donation Containers, which ban the bins in the city. Chapter 89 sets up the conditions upon which unattended donation bins may be located within the city and provides clearer measures to address nuisance conditions if they arise. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, second by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the ordinance is approved. On to new business, the introduction of an ordinance to acquire the Massey property. Mr. Mayor, I'm hereby move for the introduction of an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of 1.2079 acres of land at 28 to 50 East Baltimore Street from the Board of County Commissioners for Rehabilitation and Redevelopment. I further move for the mayor to execute the contract of sale on the effective date of the ordinance. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Ms. Nye. Any discussion? I, I just want to note, I, I apologize, I wasn't here last week for this discussion. It was uh, back to school night. Um, but I, I did have a chance to read the mayor's comments uh, in the paper and, and would, would agree that they are spot on. I think we continue down this path with this particular property um, until somebody says no. Uh, we continue as aggressively as possible because I think that 
uh, it does no good for our community for those buildings to sit there regardless of what agency out there would tell us otherwise. Uh, and I think for me, this, like the old Friendship Hotel and a number of others, are, are just a start to the number of things that need to be uh, uh, torn down uh, in this community for us to move forward. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ordinance is introduced. Item B, the introduction of an ordinance to the Land Management Code Amendments. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the Mayor and City Council introduce an ordinance to amend Chapter 140, Land Management Code of the City Code. This ordinance itemizes a package of amendments covering a wide range of revisions, which began review by the Planning Commission in 2014. The complete details are outlined in the attached ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Alshire. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I do have some discussion. I, I have one concern about the ordinance that we have not, I think, really discussed, or at least not discussed adequately. Um, this is an introduction tonight, so I'm going to be voting for it, and hopefully voting for it next time also. But the, the one thing I would like to get um, so, uh, some discussion at the work session before the next vote on this relates to uh, the staff preparing the decisions, the written decisions for the BZA. Uh, I know our city attorney, there's a disagreement among our staff between our city attorney and our department head over that. I am not aware of what the actual BZA, the board, feels. I would like to get their opinion of whether they wish to write their own opinions or desire to have staff write them. Um, and once I get that answer, I'll know how I want to vote on it. I'll vote positive tonight for the introduction. I appreciate that. We will put that item on the next work session. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Brubaker, second by Mr. Alshire, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The ordinance is introduced. <coughs> Item C, the approval of updates to the Community Development Block Grant Citizen Participation Plan. Mayor hereby move for approval of required updates to the Community Development Block Grant CDBG Citizen Partition Participation Plan. The updates to the plan align with CDBG citizen participation requirements and will ensure ongoing compliance with federal regulations. The updated CDBG citizen participation is attached uh, and I it is attached and, and but I think it needs to be replaced with a further version that was handed out. Am I correct? Correct. Is so we should refer to the version distributed to council um, as revised this as, as opposed right. to attached to the original motion. And you might include because it says it's revised as of today. Okay. Second. We motion. will pass the citizen CDBG citizen petition. The, the, the motion should reflect that it approves the citizen participation plan as revised, 825.15. And I'll Correct? second that. Yes. And, yeah. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Metzner. And I'll just add to the discussion that the revisions came from HUD. There were apparently some very minor Fine. revisions. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 No. Any opposed say no. The Motion carries and the plan is approved. Next item, item D, the approval of a renewal of an agreement between HPD Department, uh, HPD and the D Drug Enforcement Administration. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval to authorize the renewal of a mem memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency. This agreement renews our commitment to provide two officers and one sergeant to the city's DEA office to work specifically on narcotics investigations in Hagerstown and surrounding areas. In return, the DEA provides reimbursement for overtime cost associated with drug 
investigations up to $17,548 per officer to the city of Hagerstown. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the agreement is approved. Item E, the approval of an after-school program for the Robert W. Johnson Community Center. I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval for funding of the after-school program at the Robert W. Johnson Community Center. The RWJCC provides a variety of constructive after-school programs to area youth. The program's program runs for the 2015-2016 school year at a cost of $17,940. Second. Second. <coughs> Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? I just want to say that I got an email from Ms. Karen Cook, who's the director of the RWJCC, and on the first day of school, she had 42 students show up after school on their own to participate in those programs. So I think that's pretty outstanding. The city's getting a pretty good value for its money there. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and the program is approved. Next, item F, approval of an after school program for the Parkside Community Center. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for the Mayor and Council approval for funding of the after school program at Parkside Community Center. The HHA provides a variety of constructive after school programs to area youth. The program is run for the 2015 16 school year at a cost of $18,881. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the program is approved. Item G, approval of an after school program, BTJ Dance Group. Mr. Mayor, hereby move from Mayor and Council approval for funding of the BTJ Dance Group after school program that is held at the Suman Avenue Community Building. The HHA provides a variety of constructive after school programs. The area of youth, this program runs for the 2015-16 school year at the cost of $3,500. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, second by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Yeah, I just want to say the last three items um, are things that the city's not required to do, but it's seeking to get to the bottom of the kind of things the mayor referred to earlier, the, the, the fundamental uh, social basis of the community. and. I think the council feels we get high value added out of this money spent. And, uh, uh, but to people that say we do nothing, we do beyond what we're required to do. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and the program is approved. Item H is the acceptance of the Utilities Department street patching contract for fiscal year 16 with Huntsbury Brothers. <coughs> Mayor, hereby move the Mayor and City Council approve the fiscal year 2016 street patching contract in the amount of $282,950 with Huntsbury Brothers, Inc. This contract amount is an estimate with the actual cost based on the actual work performed for street patching and repairs associated the with the operations of the Water Division and Wastewater Division. This contract has two one-year renewal options under mutually agreeable terms. Approval of this contract authorizes utility department staff to exercise the renewal options. Adequate budgetary funds are in place for the work identified under this contract. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Eyes have it, the contract is approved. Item I, the approval of a contract for the R.C. Wilson Treatment Plant Lagoon Cleaning and Maintenance. Mr. Mayor, I've been moved and Mayor and City Council approved a one-year extension of the contract with Senate Grove Central LLC to provide residual removal services for .0398 per gallon with an estimated annual expenditure of $160,000 of water division operating funds. This contract shall be in effect for one year with the option to renew for an additional one year period under mutually agreeable terms as specified in the existing contract. Second. Motion made by Mr. Menster, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. 
Motion carries and the contract is approved. Item J, approval to renew annual maintenance contract for the Munis financial system software. Mayor, I hereby move for approval of the renewal of the maintenance contract for support of the Munis municipal finance software system with Tyler Technologies Inc. <coughs> Cost of the renewal is $183,905.05, including $30,000 for database administrative support and $153,905.05 for support and update licensing for 26 program modules in use by city staff. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the contract is approved. Item K, the approval of a contract office furniture at 60 West Washington Street Business Center. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for Mayor and Council to approve the bid of American Office to furnish the Business Resource Center at 60 West Washington Street at the cost of $33,517. The American <coughs> Office proposal most clearly conforms to the original design, intent, and bid specifications. Funding for this project will come from Federal USDA Rural Business Enterprises Grant Fund. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the contract is approved. Item L, the approval of IBEW Local 307 MOU. The mayor hereby move for mayor and council approval of a memorandum of agreement between the city of Hagerstown and the IBEW Local 307. This agreement satisfies the wage and benefit reopener provisions in the current collective bargaining agreement, which expires June 30, 2016. Under the terms of this agreement, the union shall receive the cost of living wage adjustment totaling 2% effective retroactively to July 6, 2015. Members of Local 307 will advance to the longevity step based upon their years of service. Longevity <coughs> steps become effective the Monday following an employee's anniversary date. The cost of the contract settlement is approximately $35,000, of which 100% is from the electric fund. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? I just want to say that uh, when this is approved, the clerk would like us to all sign it before we leave here tonight. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The motion carries and the MOU is approved. Uh, last but not least, the approval of the tourist area and corridor signing program. I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval to authorize the Maryland State Highway Administration. Administration's tourist area and corridor siding program to be implemented within the city limits after input from staff. This program will unify signage that leads to approved tourist attractions in the city of Hagerstown. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, second by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I think we also get financial assistance from the state on that. Yeah, they pay for the sign. Yeah, the state pays for the sign. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Could sir. I make just a couple of comments? I didn't take advantage of council comments, but something has occurred to me, and I think it's important enough if you'll give me Please. time. I'd like to say it. When Nancy Allen was here, um, she talked in generally in, among her specifics about the adequacy of the Hagerstown Police Force to deal with upcoming situations which is a legitimate discussion, but I want to make this one point. I heard something very interesting on TV the other night about how the Washington, D.C. police force is down 500 officers. And uh, I am certain if we looked at Baltimore, Maryland, we would find even worse statistics. But a couple of days ago, I called uh, the police department uh, here in Hagerstown to see what our situation was. Mr. Mayor, we're down three officers. I think that says something about the uh, readiness, the adequacy of our police force to deal with future uh, 
operations, and I think it says something too about the morale of the police in this area. That was the one point I wanted to make. And the second point I wanted to make was, um, I, I don't think it should be soon forgotten or overlooked that this mayor and council has made, had some very successful uh, operations in terms of uh, destroying or in the process of deconstructing uh, certain buildings in this town that have needed to come down for a very long time. We're on, we, we hope, at least, we're on the verge of getting the melt plant down. By the end of next month, hopefully it's all going to be down. <coughs> when we think back, the, um, the, the uh, building, uh, the motel building that was up on, on uh, Prospect Street, uh, this mayor and council got rid of it. Uh, also, uh, on Antietam Street, there was a big problem down there with a building that had burned. This mayor and council got rid of it. Uh, and finally, the Massey property, it's pretty clear with what we've passed tonight, that uh, in the not too distant future, this, uh, this uh, property is going to be down. And I think uh, that these, these four projects that I've just pointed out are uh, indicative of how much improvement this mayor and council have made uh, in our three years here so far. So I, I just wanted to point that out, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, the public really needs to know and understand that. Thank you for pointing that out. I will only add to that that I have been talking with the city administrator about bringing a proposal before the council to have some kind of demolition fund because there are ways that we can, uh, whether it's the property on Pennsylvania Avenue that we heard about uh, last time around, um, or you know some of these other burned out buildings, uh, whether or not we can get receivership or we put a lien on them, I think it's quite clear, like you said, it's the, the will of this council to rid the city of as many of those kinds of properties, which only continue to be a blighting influence on neighborhoods, uh, and that's exactly what we wanna stop happening. And uh, so, that's just uh, a little preview of hopefully a proposal to come very soon before the council. Let me respond to that. I think that's a really good plan. The fact is, most of these properties that we're talking about here, uh, mayors and councils have been talking for 25, 30 years trying to get them down. And uh, that's too long a time period in the life of a community when, when, when you need to improve a community. So I, I urge you to bring that plan forth. Thank you. Stay tuned. We do have a motion on the floor. All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Metzner regarding the tourist area corridor signing program, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ayes have it and the motion is approved. Thank you so much. We are adjourned.